Hello friends and welcome to Word of God Fridays. Today I've got you focused just on my fountain, different angles that I try and find every now and then. Today we're continuing on in 1 Corinthians. We'll be reading chapters 3 and 4 in the NIV. And I don't know if you knew this, but I usually try and come to the text without pre-reading just so that um, I can allow the Holy Spirit to um, move and show me something new and I pray that, that that's what happens with you as well as you listen. I do believe that the Bible is meant to be read aloud and that when we hear God's word, the Spirit uses that for bringing conviction and showing people that they need Jesus. So let's just begin today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4 in the NIV, Word of God Fridays. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace of, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though as only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools, so that you may choose, uh, so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight, as it is written. He catches the wise in their craftiness, and again the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether a Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all are yours, and you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. This, then, is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not, be, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. 
for who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did not receive it, why do you boast as those you did not? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign and that without us. How I wish that you already had begun to reign so that you, so that we also might reign with you. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. <laughs> we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to, to angels as well as to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour we go hungry and thirsty, we are in rags, we are, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world, right up to this moment. I am writing this, um, I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear, dear children, even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son whom, I'm lo whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of the way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Some of you have become arrogant, as if I were not coming to you. But I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What if, what do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come in love and with a gentle spirit? Paul is being harsh with his, uh, his young converts there in, in, the, in Corinthian, in Corinth. Uh, I was reading this section here in chapter 4 and it suddenly struck me that he's being quite sarcastic about the fact that they think that they're reigning and so amazing and yet the apostles are fools for Christ and dishonored and they're in rags and hungry and thirsty and homeless and they endure it. So it's interesting. It it's, feels to me like he's uh, suggesting that, you know, they're being arrogant about saying, look how blessed we are when that's not what the kingdom of God is about. Uh, the other thing that struck me is uh, we're still talking about how God uh, takes what we think is wise and um, it, it, it's foolish to him. And he takes, yeah, it says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. So when we think we're being wise, we're being foolish. And we should be fools for Christ, which is kind of awesome. Um, that's all I have to say today. <laughs> Word of God Fridays, 1 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4 in the NIV. Maybe you'd be blessed in hearing it.